Hello everybody and welcome. Uh, today we are joined by Sophie Stevenson. Uh, Sophie is a step dancer from the Highlands of Scotland. Welcome Sophie, hi. Hi Joanne, thank you so much for having me. No problem. So Sophie, tell us how long have you been dancing for? Well, I guess I've really been dancing all my life from, from um, the Cayley dancing, um, growing up and also I, did, I started with highland dancing ballet dancing and tap dancing from the age of two or three uh, and then i picked up the step dancing um through the local fish uh, when i was about 10 years old and then i was really lucky shortly after that to to go off to learn some steps from uh, harvey beaton when he was over teaching at soma rostig the nile of sky oh brilliant fantastic and so now um you know as, a, as an artist and a, and a performer what kinds of projects are you involved in well, I've been really lucky to work with lots of different artists. Um, particularly, I like working with um, Gaelic singers, working with Proust Jabil, Gaelic mouth music. I've got a, a project called Trad Beats um, with um, the Gaelic singers, uh, Ailey Monroe, Deirdre Graham and Catherine Tinney. And last year we um, put together a collaboration um, with the beatboxer Big Taj from Glasgow, as well as um, two, um, two beatboxers and uh, rap artists from Brittany and also um, three musicians, dancers and singers from Quebec as well. So I like I like working on quite international projects and bringing different traditions together. But that particular project was focusing on the mouth music traditions and the connection between the mouth music traditions in those cultures in, in uh, Breton, um, Quebecois and um, Gaelic music and also the dance traditions that go along with those. So I'm really interested in that kind of thing. I've also done collaborations with like Basques, uh, Basque musicians, um, hip hop, um, and also more traditional and um, pipes and 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 fiddle um, and that kind of thing but since since lockdown it's really changed because the collaborations have been more uh, remote and i've done a few more video projects working remotely with artists and making videos so it's actually been quite interesting because uh, when you're when you're on stage there's a certain kind of stage presence you have to have and um there's maybe the steps have to be bigger or louder or you might end up wearing um tap shoes or or having floor microphones but what's really been nice during lockdown is making these wee videos and you can wear soft you know um leather soled shoes and just pick up the nice subtleties of the dance um which maybe aren't always conveyed on a bigger stage and a different angle so that's been interesting the last last year we're doing that kind of thing so <laughs> I mean that sounds amazing. <laughs> now talking of bigger projects as well, you've recently been involved in quite a few high profile um, TV appearances including meeting Darcy Bustle. <laughs> so do you want to tell us a wee bit about that as well? That sounds brilliant. Yeah that was I mean an amazing opportunity. I, um to meet Darcy so that um, I was living on the Isle of Skye and, and Darcy was doing a series um, for more for called Darcy Bustle's Wild Coasts of Scotland and she was uh, in different um, islands of, of the west coast of Scotland and she was looking uh, in particular well just meeting people but in each island she went to she was exploring a dance tradition as well so that was a really amazing opportunity to meet Darcy and she was just so lovely and and um, a really nice person to to work with and and uh, it's funny at the time I did I've done a few tv things recently um I did um something for RT the, the cultural channel the European cultural channel which wasn't I guess shown in the UK but it was over across Europe and in different languages in, in Germany and France and things I also did something recently for Sky Arts channel and um about Boswell and Johnson I hadn't really I guess this was the first one that I'd done which was maybe a, a more general audience for, for more for and it had a, a, a bigger audience watching it I would say and I, and at the time you know I did it and it was you know it was lovely and and uh, Darcy was lovely and Ronan Martin joined me on fiddle, fiddle and it was only really once it came out on TV that I kind of realized the impact of of doing something something like that and um, the interesting thing from my point of view is I wasn't doing anything new that I haven't been doing for years. I was, you know, shuffling my feet. I was, you know, I was uh, just doing my paddy bars and my, my shuffles and and um, dancing a wee jig and a wee reel. And, um, but what was interesting was suddenly the response, even actually I have to say just from friends and family, suddenly getting in touch to say, oh, well done Sophie for doing that. And congratulations, or I loved seeing, and it was actually, even just getting the recognition for something that I've been doing for so long. So actually the the 
what I've been doing in terms of the tradition and the dancing. I mean, I, I was doing that anyway, but suddenly by it being recognized on mainstream media, um, it just some, suddenly, um, I guess it got more, more recognition and more appreciation, I would say. Um, and, and also, I guess it, it's brought new people as well that maybe didn't know about the tradition have, have learned about it through through the um through the program but it was yes after after it coming out i was thinking I, it reminded me of i remember looking through the the sleeve notes of a, of a cd one of martin bennett's cds um and he had a quote there from from alan uh, lomax the the folklorist and, and um collector alan alan lomax alan lomax and the quote was about cultural equity and i actually just looked out the quote there um and he said um this is what alan lomax said which which martin bennett quoted all cultures need their fair share of of the airtime when country folk or tribal peoples hear or view their own traditions in the big media projected with the authority gen generally reserved for the output of large urban centres, and when they hear their traditions taught to their own children, something magical occurs. And I really think that that's true of of um so in the context of of this um this, this show there was kind of two big things there was one was that it was on tv it was it was on you know it was produced for channel four and um secondly it was darcy bustle who you know is obviously world acclaimed as a, as a ballet dancer and her herself i guess she, she's had um recognition i guess in the mainstream through being on programs such as um strictly come dancing she's a judge on strictly come dancing so she already has a bigger following because of that as well. So for someone of her caliber, you know, of, of who's well respected and of a respected tradition such as ballet, to to not only acknowledge the step dance tradition, but appreciate it and to give it airtime. I think the combination of those two things, <clears throat> I think, says a lot. And I think it was, um, from my point of view. I wasn't doing anything different than I have been doing for years, um, but I think for, for the general audience's point of view, I think it ha um, I'm hoping that it has made a difference to to people's appreciation and understanding of of the tradition. So, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, so, so, why do you think um, that it's so important to the the profile of the tradition? Um, I think I think just because well in, in in that show as well I taught Darcy a few steps now actually what you don't see is kind of us all the takes we did <laughs> that don't end up on the TV so it looks like she picks it up straight away but even as a dancer we did go over it a few times um but from that point of view they're seeing someone learning the tradition oh okay that doesn't look too come it's not it wasn't just um a performance as such it was a participatory type thing so it's like oh okay I can I can learn learn that um and then people just seeing it and being aware of it um and yeah just discovering it for the for the first time some some people yeah <laughs> and and how do you think that this is translated into the activity that you've been doing during lockdown yeah so so during lockdown um well obviously well when lockdown hit i had a few big projects on the cards i had um, i was developing trad beats and we had summer festivals lined up and i was so excited about that and i had another big project i was working on in france and um the different weeks of teaching and obviously that was all just cancelled and at first it was like oh gosh what, what you know so for the first time ever i had to you know i actually unpacked my suitcase and <laughs> stayed still um for, for a while um and then it was I was quite late to the game really with <laughs> with the online teaching but about six months into lockdown I was asked by Face Spay to teach um, there both children and adults and I started teaching with that uh, and then I thought oh this is great it's actually quite a great a good way of teaching so um, I started teaching on online and ad and advertising my classes so I do weekly weekly step dance classes now online and uh, yeah quite a few people have been in touch um who discovered me or discovered step dancing having seen that program as well as some of the other programs i've been on and also um jane mcleod the step dancer from lewis as well she did a program with um susan calman um and yeah so just the profile i guess is is there people are hearing about it and it's definitely 
uh, and also other things um, like added Celtic connections at the beginning of the year as well. Um, so that's definitely, I've definitely had a number of students who've now signed up, just beginners, onto my beginners course, having having seen the programme. So that's been, been great. Great. So you've been doing a lot of online classes then. So, um, so what do you think the benefits have been of teaching online? I think it's been an amazing opportunity and it's opened up fantastic opportunities. Um, I mean, first of all, it's the costs, you're not having to fly to all these places. <laughs> so environmentally and economically, you know, it's it's been great because um, my class have been so international and, and a lot of my students are people I have met in whether it's been in, the, in Moscow or in the Basque country or um, in Ireland or, or over in America. So, so some of my students are, are people that I have met through my travels and I guess that's really helped um, my my kind of having my a, a good number of participants but because of past festivals I've, I've, I've taught at um, but then um, but then it's just, it's just been great because we've been I've been able to people can tune in and um, all be in the one class and it's been really good and also I record the classes and that means people can can watch back afterwards and go over the steps and it means also that if they're in a different time zone and they can tune up and catch up in catch up with the steps um they can tune in and catch up with the steps afterwards um yeah so it's been really great I've had students from across the UK uh, from Ireland France Switzerland Germany Spain um Sweden uh Russia, America, Canada. So <laughs> I've really had had students from Japan, um, from 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 all over, and it's been quite inspiring actually. Apart from anything, just to meet these people because they they've all got their own traditions as well. So, um, especially you know they might do different styles of percussive dance or dance in general, and and um, just feel I've actually felt more connected to a kind of dance community than ever. Th since we've all been meeting online and gathering online and, and it's been really great and I, I actually think it's um it's inspired me to to continue with a, a similar model I think even after lockdown to continue offering offering classes in this way because there's a definitely a global interest there um in in Scottish culture um and in percussive dance as well so that's Absolutely brilliant. How brilliant that to have discovered it, you know, through through the work that you've been doing and then and then for that to translate into new dancers. So you've definitely been getting people dancing, that's for sure. Um thank you so much for joining us. Um and uh, good luck with everything in the future. Thanks, Sophie. Thank you, Joanne.